All right, it's another Ice Time Hockey Southwest uh, Sunday special. I've got the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, Greg Powers. And, Coach, a lot of things to talk about in a short period of time, but let's start off with the schedule that you guys released today, the home schedule. Uh, really, really an awesome and formidable group of opponents, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we, we uh, I think we're staying true to our word that, that we want to bring in the best competition for uh, our fans to uh, to witness. Um and uh, we're certainly doing that. You know, the Desert Classic, you can't get a better field in a, in a mid-season tournament than three top ten teams from the previous year and, and the national champion. Um, and then, you know, when you, when you can bring in teams like Ohio State and Michigan State and big names that, that have brands like that, I think those are teams and programs and universities that our fans relate very well to. Uh, obviously, Boston College and, and certainly, you know, Colorado College had a great year last year and... Uh, we're excited about bringing in uh, two schools that, that our, our fan base probably doesn't know a lot about in, in Alaska Anchorage and, and American International. So we, we have a great home slate, and uh, we are, uh, we're really excited about it. What does that say about the state of your program? You and I have talked uh, many times about it, but the respect that you're getting to get big-time schools like that to come down here to Tempe is, is says something about what you guys have done so far, right? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think you know, the more established we become and the more competitive that we, we have become, um, you know, everybody's willing to play us. And I think it says more about the, the, the overall body of, of college hockey, willing to uh, come all the way out here and, and help us grow our program. Um, you know, with, with a, a program like Boston College and, 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 and a coach like Jerry York to come out here and be able to play uh, against him twice um, in Tempe is going to be really special. So tell me a little bit about, uh, we know what the schedule looks like, but let's back up a step. About a month ago or so, you had your uh, season-ending awards, and I know you had some guys that, that really stood out for you uh, last year. So talk a little bit about uh, some of the guys that, that made a difference on last year's team. Well, I mean, it's it's you know the awards were great you know and th those were voted on by the players and the staff and um, we had a new Iron Man in, in Gavito Jansons and, and we're proud of Gavito he's he's a he's a model for what um, we believe our guys should should be off the ice you know how he takes care of his body um, the intensity at which he works out with um, and and how he attacks every workout and every practice is what is what you know, we want all of our guys to be like. So he uh, he took that away from, from Crow, and Crow's got another year to, <laughs> to, to try and win it back, and I'm sure he'll give Vito more than, than a run for his money. So we're proud of Vito for winning that as a freshman. Um, certainly uh, best teammate went to Brinson. Um, I think, the, you know, as you grow something organically like we have done with our program, um, Brinson's our best player. I think everybody knows it, um, and, and there's no hiding that fact. When you can have your best player get voted best teammate by right. his peers, you got something. I yep. think I think you got something, and um, we know how special that kid is in, in in every way, and we're really proud of him. Um, and then certainly rookie of the year was was pretty much unanimous when you have the kid that that was second in the country in goals like Johnny was with 17 and had the end of the season that he had. It was it was a no brainer. So. Uh, we're looking for big things for Johnny, um, and he's going to go to uh, Columbus Blue Jackets uh, development camp. Very uh, good. Brinson will go to the Arizona Coyotes development camp, so we're really proud of those two guys. Um, and then obviously our MVP, um, it was split dead even right down the middle, two very deserving guys. Brinson, uh, obviously we talked about him, and then Joey Decord. Um, he, he, he was a, a monster for us, um, and, and he had to be almost every night for us to compete and have a chance to win. So, you know, we love what we have coming back. You know, we lost David Norris and Gage Hoff, um, and uh, we'll miss those guys. But with what we're bringing in and, and all the, the, the veteran presence that we're going to finally have, um, we're going to have some upperclassmen here that, that have gone through the process with us and believe in what we're doing and it can really set the tone and, and a great example for our young guys and that's what building the program is all about and uh, the deeper we get into it the more excited we are. So those were on ice awards. I know you're very proud of your academics as well and talk a little bit about those. Uh, was it six guys that, that graduated this year for you? Yeah, you know. Earned four, degrees I should say. Four, well four of them earn undergraduate degrees and, and still have eligibility so they're going to go on and uh, and get a master's degree and play their fourth year. Dylan Holman 
Anthony Croston, Jake Clifford, and Jack Rowe. So, you know, that, that, that is something I think people can expect to see more of. We really encourage our guys that are on four-year scholarships to figure out a way to get their undergraduate degrees in three years and use that fourth year to get an extra degree and a, and a master's degree in whatever they want to study and go on and do with their life. And, and it's really great to see those four kids um, take advantage of that opportunity. Um, and then certainly with, with David and, and Gage, um, obtaining their master's degrees that that'll that'll serve them very well and whatever they decide to do with their lives so um, yeah we, you know academically we had a great year again uh, 3.5 cumulative GPA just under 3.5 cumulative GPA which is again the highest on the men's side here within ASU athletics so we're setting the bar very high for uh, um, ourselves and, and other programs and becoming a model uh, program from an academic standpoint which is what we, we want to be Let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll talk about the uh, the new Sun Devils coming in and what you expect for the upcoming season. Sounds in good. today's odor elimination, sanitizing, and deodorizing market, air spaces and fabrics are treated with very aggressive, highly toxic, and often very dangerous but cheap chemical-based solutions. These chemicals have harmful residues and pollutants that can impact your health and the well-being of those around you. This is the bad news. The good news is there's something better. That something is OxyPal. OxyPal is a fast-growing company based in Phoenix, Arizona, with franchises opening across North America. OxyPal has developed a way to eliminate, not mask or disguise, all organic-based odors in any airspace or on any fabric surface with ozone, also called trioxygen. Ozone is present in the atmosphere, and it is what protects our planet, our environment, and every living thing on Earth. Through years of research and development, OxyPal has perfected a way to harness and apply this powerful solution to purify air spaces and fabric surfaces safely and effectively, eliminating all organic bacteria, viruses, mold, fungi, and allergens on the molecular level. OxyPal has designed and perfected many next generation and evolutionary alternative products and services safe for people, pets, and our planet. The solutions offered by OxyPal are stronger, safer, non-toxic, and a great value. Visit our website and online store today at www.oxypal.com. On our website, you can make a service appointment buy products, or learn more about us and our great franchising opportunities. All right, we're back for another segment with Coach Powers. And Coach, we talked a little bit about last season and about the past. Let's talk a little bit about the future. I know you had a big signing day in April, and we haven't had a chance to talk since then. So tell me a little bit about some of those guys that are coming on board this year for you. Well, right now, we're, we're, at, we're at seven. Uh, there may be an eighth. We're, we're, we're debating on that, uh, and, and we'll decide on that any day. Um, but uh, the seven that we have signed and, and are, are able to talk about, um, we, we, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're a tremendous class. They really are. They, 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 you know, they all bring something to the table that we don't have currently, um, which is, again, part of, of building the program up from scratch. Um, this is really a, a class that we felt like we were almost on even, um, uh, an even playing field with the rest of the Division One hockey because um, kids commit so early. Um, so it's not a class with, with kids that either decommitted from somewhere else or, um, you know, grinded it out uh, as an overager per se. Um, you know, there's some kids in this class that have been committed to us now for, for a couple of years and have been chomping at the bit to get here, and, and we're excited to get them here, you know. Um, you know, on the back end, Josh Maniscalco, he's our first yeah. national team development program um, graduate that, that'll be at ASU. Uh, had a, a, an incredible year in Dubuque. I think he was fifth in, in the USHL for D in scoring. Jared Gorley wore a letter up in Spruce Grove, and, and, and they won the Alberta Junior Hockey League. And he's just a tremendous two-way guy, physical, uh, can shut you down and, and really clean up. Uh, the dangerous area around our net and, and he's going to be a, a great addition um, high character kid just just a tremendous human being um, and then our, our, our goalie that we added Evan DeBrower um, put Prince George on his back and, and darn near almost won the British Columbia Hockey League uh, championship up there and that was I think PG's uh, 
first real run in a very long time, and it was it was largely in part due to him. They had a great team, and we're really well coached. But Evan Evan was the catalyst that that made that happen, and you know he's going to come in and, and really push Joey, and, and that's Joey's net. Everyone knows it's Joey's net, um, but we had to plan for the future uh, in the event that we lose Joey and and. Uh, and I think Evan um, is the perfect fit for, for a number of reasons. And, but he, he's very good. He's very good, and, and he's going to add a, an element to um, that position um, that we're, we're going to welcome. Um, and then up front, you know, the four kids, they're, they're all really good. You know, P.J. Morocco was, was uh, leading the uh, Alberta Junior Hockey League in goals uh, prior to his trade to Chilliwack, and he's just getting ready to play in the RBC Cup up there and and was was you know you, sometimes when you move leagues it takes you a little bit to adjust and, and adjust to a new team and figure out how to produce and, and it didn't take him any time he moved right to Chilliwack and picked up where he left off in in Bonneville when he was in Alberta same thing with Derek Brown he was in Bonneville uh, he led the Alberta League in points per game before his trade got traded to Vernon and was arguably Vernon's best player in the playoffs when it when it matters most he uh, absolutely lit it up and, and, and was scoring goals for them left and right. So Brownie will be a big addition for us. He's big, he can skate, um, and he's, he's, he's a kid that can really create offense. Jordan Sandu, another a player from Vernon, he's been committed here for a couple of years. He, he's, uh, he's just he's something we don't have. You know, he can play down the middle, he can play on the wing. His, his compete is, is off the charts. He's kind of that, that small jitterbug type guy that that, that's hard in the four check. He reloads really well. Um, he'll he'll really help us with our puck possession. He's just that player that when he's on the ice, the puck follows him and it's always on his stick. Um, so he's going to be a welcome addition. And then obviously Demetrius Kumanzis um, was up in Edina, was a Mr. Hockey finalist, and uh, I think every NHL team has interviewed him at this point, and we're expecting and, and hoping that he does get drafted and. Uh, we're pulling for him and, and uh, think that that could happen. But Demetrius is is a huge addition for us. Uh, he'll be a true freshman, only our second true freshman that we brought into the program. The first was obviously Brinson, and we all know how that worked out. Right. So we think we think Big D's ready to, to make the jump, and he can come in and contribute right away. Talk a little bit about, um, I know you and I talked also earlier this year about the fact that you have all your scholarships in, in play right now, and you're going to have some guys that are going to be red shirts this year, I'm guessing, right? Uh, no, I don't no? think we're going to have any red shirts. Nope. Uh, we're, we're, we're moving through some final roster decisions and, and pieces. Uh, Rylan Pashovitz won't be back with us. Um, Pash wanted to, to move on and, and, and end his career and uh, focus on life beyond hockey. And he's going to stay here and graduate next year on scholarship. And, and we're happy about that. And uh, we're deciding what we're going to do with the roster. But um, we're in good shape. We, we know we got a lot of bodies. Um, uh, and that means we got a lot of depth and there's a lot of things we can do in practice to be creative with that depth and compete hard every day and, and, and scrimmage or whatever it may be. Um, we're going to use it to our advantage. Um, and, and we knew this year was going to be kind of uh, tight from a number situation um, because it was the first year we had planned to use all 18 scholarships and we had to bring in such a large class, larger than we wanted to in that hybrid year. Um, and all those kids are seniors, and, and uh, you know, so so it's it's a it's a big roster, but but we're gonna get through it. Uh, we got a great group of kids, um, and uh, they're gonna be expected to uh, continue to be bought in despite the large roster, and and they all know what they're getting into, and um, and are supportive of it. What would be the difference if you could put one thing on between this year's team and last year's team? What do you think is gonna be the biggest difference? I should say. I think just more of a complete lineup. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're going to have some skill. I mean, even a kid like Austin Lemieux, who redshirted last year because of um, some compliance NCAA uh, compl you know, clearinghouse issues. It had nothing to do with, with, with his athletic ability. Um, he was a kid in practice we saw. And, and you know, more days than not, we, we were like, God, we really wish we had him. <laughs> yeah. You know, so he, he's an exciting piece that we're going to add as well. Um, just a level of skill, a level of skill. I think we're going to be able to put kids into roles that will make them more successful individually than what we have. Um, we've, we've, we've had kids and we've asked kids to maybe do more than, than not necessarily what they're capable of, but what their skill set best suits them to do. 
Um, and we believe, you know, lines one through four and deep pair one through three, we're going to be able to put kids where they belong and where they, they, they uh, can most importantly obviously help us win games, but um, achieve personal success as hockey players. So um, just more complete, more depth, um, and uh, I think people will see that. I want to wrap things up with three quick things. And first one I want to talk about with you, and I know you spent many a moon on, a, on an airplane and a bus, but what are your thoughts on the tragedy up in Humboldt? I know you guys have been affected by it. You see all those kids up there all the time, but what were your first thoughts when that happened? I think everybody has some sort of, you know, uh, degrees of separation from that, right? I mean, everybody right. knew somebody that was really... Uh, tragically affected by that, it, it's 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 it was brutal. You hate to see it. I mean, Pash, you know, played in Humboldt, yeah. and uh, so it touched him re really close to home. Um, Gage Mackey played with 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 unfortunately uh, one of the players that 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 passed away in in, in the crash, and then Jared Gorley. Um, you know, we have a ton of kids that that played in Spruce Grove, and um, you know, there were two kids that played in Spruce last year. Uh, with Jared that, that were a part of that and both both unfortunately passed away. So we had a lot of kids that, that were really affected by that and, and obviously the hockey community embraced it and uh, has very well supported Humboldt and their community and that's always great to see. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the obligatory questions I always got to throw out there. How are we doing with the arena the arena phases at this point everything everything's on pace on everything's on pace we expect to be in that arena in, in july of 2020 uh there's a huge process when you build something like this and sure. obviously it goes in conjunction with you know a, a, a massive renovation of wells fargo arena so um all in all it, it's it's moving along great administration's really humming on it so we're uh we're we're on pace to to continue to to be in that thing and one, what comes with that, and it's not really uh, tied to it, but any news on conference uh, movement yet? Anything Nothing I can share with about? you, but, but I can tell you that we, we've, um, we've begun to work really hard at it. Um, and uh, it's a huge priority for us now that we have the arena, and, and we're going to figure it out pretty quick. Um, so nothing I can share. I can't really tip my cap to, to what we're thinking and where we're leaning and who we're talking to and in discussions with. But um, it is now uh, a huge priority for our program, our administration, um, and we're working hard at it. And let's wrap it up. I know your goal is always going to tell me that you want to get better, but if you could set a goal, what's a realistic goal for this team wins-wise? What do you think when you look at that schedule? What, what can you guys produce? You know, we, we believe we can beat anybody. Um, we believe we're going to have the talent and, and the depth and, and the experience um, to, to compete every night. Uh, and, and that's that's going to be it. Our goal right now is is we're focusing on Alaska, right? Uh, Fairbanks on October sixth and seventh, and, and that is it. That is literally it. Uh, we're going to take it week by week and game by game. Um, and uh, I think if we do that and focus on what is right in front of us on a daily basis and getting better every day, everything will take care of itself. Awesome, coach. I appreciate your time and uh, good luck. As the uh, summer goes on, I know it's, uh, it never stops for you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Wildcat Hockey.
The Wildcats are back in action, and it's time to show your U of A pride at the TCC Arena. Please call for tickets or come to the TCC box office. U of A hockey is affordable and fun for the entire family. We need you. We need you. We need you to support U of A Wildcat hockey. 